Hello YouTube, it's Supernova back with more Falcon 4 BMS. Today we're looking at the JDAM. The Joint Direct Attack Munition or JDAM is a guidance kit that converts unguided gravity bombs into precision guided munitions, which are then given the Guided Bomb Unit or GBU designation. Bombs so equipped are guided by an integrated inertial guidance system coupled to a global positioning system receiver and have a range of 15 nautical miles. The JDAM was developed to provide an improvement over laser guided bombs and imaging infrared, which are vulnerable to bad weather conditions including dust, smoke, fog and cloud cover. We are approaching steer point 4 with master mode set to air to ground and master arm set to arm. The JDAMs need to be powered. Power them on now with OSB 7. To maintain heading on active steer point and altitude, engage autopilot roll and pitch. Set RPM to 100% to maintain airspeed between Mach 0.5 and Mach 1.5. Today we're attacking two bridges with two 2,000 pound GBU-31 bombs loaded on stations 3 and 7. We will use Ionist steer point coordinates to target the bombs. We will assign the coordinates for Dalsan South Bridge to steer point 5. To do that without making steer point 5 active we will use the desk page. To open the desk page press the list button on the integrated control panel or ICP which is F4 by default. Then press ICP1, which is 1 on the numeric keypad. Use the ICP rocker switch to select steer point 5. Use the dauber switch to move the scratch pad to the latitude line and enter ICP2 for north, then 3821463 and press ICP enter. Then select the longitude line and enter ICP6 for east and type 12934837 and press ICP enter. Note that target elevation is not yet implemented in BMS. We will now assign the coordinates for Dalsan North Bridge to steer point 6. Use the ICP rocker switch to increment the steer point to steer point 6 on the data entry display or DED. Enter N3823466 on the latitude line and E1293427 on the longitude line and press enter. To return to the Communications Navigation IFF or CNI page on the DED, press double left. We will now set the attack parameters for the two GBU-31 bombs. There are four JDAM profiles available, which allows us to attack four separate targets at the same time. 
We will use profile 1 for Delsan Southbridge and profile 2 for Delsan Northbridge. We will set an arming delay and an impact azimuth for both bombs. Arming delay defines the time until the bomb is armed after leaving the aircraft. Impact azimuth defines the angle at which the bomb will approach and impact the target. The angle must not exceed a 60 degree difference to the heading of the aircraft at release, otherwise the bomb will be unable to conform to the parameters and will instead fly direct to the target. To view the control page press OSB5. Confirm that PRE is selected at OSB2. To enter an arming delay of 9 seconds, press OSB19, enter 900, then press OSB2. To enter an impact azimuth of 350, press OSB7, enter 350, then press OSB2. Press OSB20 to switch to Profile 2, select PRE mode with OSB2 and enter an arming delay of 7 seconds and an impact azimuth of 340. Exit the control page with OSB5 and confirm the parameters entered for both profiles, making sure that profile 1 is active. Approaching steer point 4 makes steer point 5 active with the ICP rocker switch. To the right of the hood is the Dynamic Launch Zone or DLZ. At the top and bottom are the upper range scale mark and the lower range scale mark. Between them are two brackets. The taller bracket on the left is Launch Acceptable Region or LAR1. The horizontal marks at the top and bottom indicate Range Maximum or RMAX1 and Range Minimum or RMIN1. The bracket on the right is LAR2. The marks at the top and bottom are RMAX2 and RMIN2. Release between RMAX2 and RMIN2 is required to ensure the bomb has enough energy to meet the settings entered on the SMS control page. If LAR2 is not displayed, the attack azimuth on the active SMS profile can't be met and the bomb will follow a direct route to the target. There are three lines of data under the DLZ. The top line indicates the time until loft, when the carrot meets the upper range mark, then the time to RMAX1, then the time since RMAX1. The second line provides the actual time when the counter will reach zero, the time at loft, the time at RMAX1, and the time at impact. The third line indicates target bearing and range. Select the targeting pod or TGP by pressing OSB 13. Bruiser. Select air to ground sub mode Bruiser. by pressing OSB 1 and then OSB 6. Bruiser. The TGP will slew to the currently active steer point, which is steer point 5. For a closer view of Delsan South Bridge, press OSB3.
You may adjust magnification up and down with the manual range knob which is Alt F3 and Alt F4 by default. When the carrot reaches RMAX 2, release the first bomb at Dalsan Southbridge by pressing and holding down the weapon release button. The right wing drops as the weapon is released from station 3. Press OSB 20 to switch to profile 2. Press the ICP rocker switch to increment the active steer point to steer point 6. To release the second bomb at Dalsan Northbridge, with the carrot between Armax 2 and Armin 2, press and hold the weapon release button. GBU released. As always, feel free to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.